So Cindy, you are known as the master of elegance, a leading expert at taking another shot, the fairy golf mother, and my favorite, most recently known as a badass bitch from Buffalo. Western New York knows Cindy from Silver Creek, but we want to get inside your head a little bit, know a little bit more about you, your passions, how you change people's lives in more way than one. And what better way to do that than play a game of 10 questions with you and none other than in your element. So are you down? Bring it. Cindy, I'm going to start with a couple icebreakers with you, all right? That's fine. All right. The first important one, what is your favorite color? Purple. Number two, favorite food? Ice cream. Mm. Vanilla. Oh, it's very specific. <laughs> and number three, what do you like to do in your spare time? Create things. I like to sew. So, I grew up playing golf at this particular club, Tri-County Country Club in Forestville, New York. My parents played golf every weekend, and I thought golf was dumb. And the pool was my babysitter until I got fat in 8th grade, and all the cute boys started to call me 10 Ton Tessie. So I quickly found an aversion to swimming, and my only other option was a golf course. And I was actually pretty good at it. And my mom and her friends took me to an LPGA Tour event when I was 17, and I saw Laura Baugh playing, who's only a year older than me, and I quickly found my new dream in life. I was going to be a star on the LPGA Tour. There was only one problem. They told me, you're not good enough. So I had to find a school where I could play college golf to learn how to get good enough. And there was no internet, so I wrote to the Ben Hogan Company, and Golf Digest magazine, I played their clubs and I read their magazine, so I assumed they would care about me. And they actually wrote back. And the number one school on the list was the University of Miami. So I wrote to them and I said, hey, I'm Cindy from Silver Creek. I'd like to be on your golf team. They wrote back and said, you're not good enough. And so I wrote back and I said, well, can I come down and try? And they said, you're welcome to come try, but you'll probably never play. My dad told me I had one year to earn a scholarship or I'd have to come home because they couldn't afford it. I graduated four years later, the number one player on the team. We won back-to-back -back national championships, and I was voted team captain and All-American my senior year. So you, Bo Canes, that could not have been an easy transition to go from four seasons of mostly chilly weather to what feels like the equator heat. Now you've come across many junior students who have college golf in their main line of sight. What does it take to make it there? The dream. The dream has to be big enough. You've got to be willing to commit to it. You have to put in, I call it the pits, putting in time. You've got to practice. And you know what the, the biggest thing is? You got to want it. You got to want it. You got to be willing to work. You got to be willing to wait. And then you get the win. Excellent advice. Alright, so other than junior golfers, who else do you help? People between the ages of 3 and 93. Wow. And the ability level of total beginner, have no idea what they're doing, to even a PGA Tour Comeback Player of the Year, and anything in between. Golf clearly does not discriminate. It doesn't. Golf is no easy sport to play, but we definitely know that there's much to learn from the game. You have quite the experience, so tell us about Golf Channel's reality hit series, A Big Break. You finished second runner-up, which is an outstanding achievement, but we want to know what inspired you to apply for and take part in the show. You know, it's funny that you asked that. When I played on the LPGA Tour, I got my card on my second try and I lost it after three seasons. So I tell people of the best players in the world, I was one of the worst. And I married PGA Tour player, past champion, life member Alan Miller, 
and we had three beautiful children and 25 years after I had lost my card I was sitting in my sweatshop in Silver Creek and I saw that there was a Legends Tour performer tour players and the thought ran through my head you know what this is the chance for you to prove that the dream you had when you were 17 to play on the LPGA Tour and be a star isn't going to be a nightmare that would haunt you for the rest of your life. So I got an email from the Golf Channel and it said, hey, do you want to be on this show for women? And the little voice in my head said, well, that's ridiculous. You already played on the LPGA Tour. You don't want a, an exemption. And then the other little voice said, excuse me, we both know that you want to win a Legends Tour event. And we both know that if you were tied for the lead and had to hit a shot over water with thousands of people watching you, in the 18th hole, you'd puke. You'd choke your guts out and you'd blow it. Good point. You need to apply to be on this show because you need to learn how not to choke. You need to go get better. So I applied and I was t chosen as the token old fart of the show. <laughs> Little did I know that I would finish third on the show. And the next tournament back on the Legends Tour after the show was done airing, I always had to qualify. It was the Hy-Vee Classic in Des Moines, Iowa. And this year I didn't have to qualify. I got a sponsor's exemption because I was now a television golf celebrity. And when you're a token field filler, you always get to tee off first. And my friend and I teed off first the first round of the tournament. And she shot 68, I shot 71. And the last round of the tournament, I was about three groups back. And I, uh, I actually birdied the 17th hole. And I walked to the 18th tee, tied for the lead, having to hit a shot over water with thousands of people watching me. The same scenario that little voice said to me a year before, I was living. I knocked the ball on the green, I two-putted for par, everybody went crazy because now they know who I am. Before I was like a nobody. And my girlfriend birdied 17, she ended up winning by one. But you know what, even though I didn't win the tournament, I defeated my demons, I exposed my elephants, and I proved to myself that the dream that I had when I was 17 years old to play on the tour wasn't gonna be a nightmare that would haunt me for the rest of my life. All right, so it's obvious your talent and teaching skills are driven by some passion. You don't just make top 50 women's golf instructor in the world by whipping up a cocktail. So tell me, how does Cindy Miller help others and who is your perfect student? Hmm. I'm going to start with my perfect student. Typically they have one of three problems or issues that they would like fixed. Number one, they're not consistent at all. They can hit a good shot, but they don't know why and they can't do it over and over again. And that drives them nuts. And they might be totally confused because they're always seeking answers from outside sources and then they're thinking of 14,000 different things, so the confusion makes them inconsistent. Second person doesn't know how to score. They can't play the golf course the right way to maximize their potential on their in their round. And number three, those who seem to choke, who uh, play with clenched butt cheeks, if you will. And the reason I love helping these people is I've lived all of these problems and challenges. And I've practiced my whole life and tried to pursue my personal potential and embrace the priv privilege of pressure, if you will. And um, now it's time for me to help others do the same thing. Holy smokes. <laughs> Last question of the day. Can you give us one of Cindy's best pieces of advice? Hmm. That sometimes there's a little voice in your tummy that says that you should try to do something that might be scary that you're not sure you're qualified for or you're good enough. And I would tell you, you need to listen to that little voice. 
I would tell you, you need to pursue it, your passion, your potential, possibly even your purpose in life. Because you see, it's never too late to get, do, and be better, to own it. 